Mr. President of the National Council of Western Armenia, Madam President of the Parliament of Western Armenia, Members of Government, Deputies of the Parliament of Western Armenia, dear compatriots, dear friends. Western Armenia has initiated this unique conference on the arrival of the bust of Anaid in the Republic of Eastern Armenia, a fact that deserves a specific conference dedicated to the Armenian goddess. The aim of this conference is to get back to the basics of re-establish our population's long-standing link with the rich heritage of its culture. First of all, I would like to thank our institution, the government, the parliament, who have worked to make this conference a reality. Through this conference on Anaid, we will be immersed in a world of an indigenous nation whose existence dates back more than 10,000 years, a nation which, according to the Mabillonian map, was at the origin of one of the oldest states of the world, of whose territory is at the base of the family tree of nations and countries of the world. We will also be immersed in the spiritual world of Western Armenia, which, like Aryan's thread, links us to this day to the very essence of our identity. The land of the Armenian nation is full of jewels that amaze those who have the pleasure of discovering them. This heritage is part of ourselves, and we have just <laughs> devoted the Sixth Summer University of Western Armenia to it. We presented the destroyed heritage of Western Armenia and revisited a large number of symbolic, sacred, and cosmic sites. Among all the sites that make up the heritage of Western Armenia, and the ancient Mesopotamian cuneiform sources attest the high sacred seats of Western Armenia bear witness to the civilization, wealth of the Armenian nation. Mon Nemrut, the pantheon of Armenian gods, sometimes also called the eighth wonder of the antiquity, is a dazzling testimony to this. Built on a hill in the Armenian Taurus mountain range at an altitude of 2,000 meters, majestic statues up to eight meters high and constructed from large blocks of limestone represent the Armenian gods. In the middle of the tumulus sanctuary built by King Antioch is the statue of Aramas, the supreme Armenian god revered as the creator of the earth and sky, the source of happiness, abundance, and virility. To the right of Aramast is the statue of the mother goddess Anaid, honored with the title of golden mother and considered to be the glory and nurturer of the country, the source of all blessings, the protector and guardian of the country, and the capital. On other sides of Aramast are statues of Mir, god of light and justice, and Vahagan, god of war, bravery, and storms. The notion of the Armenian plateau as the dwelling place of the gods could not have existed among many peoples of anterior Asia without being widely known to its native. And even if the adoption of Christianity was accompanied by the destruction of what was pre-Christian, direct and indirect references to it can still be found on the pages of medieval Armenian literature. Beros Babylonica, a three-volume encyclopedia of ancient Mesopotamian cuneiform sources, presents Armenia as the place of creation, the cradle of humanity, and the dwelling place of the gods, who meet and take decisions and the most important issues, including those relating to humanity. This concept was also shared by the Sumerians, Akkadians, Canaanites, Urits, and Itits. The Armenian plateau was therefore 
considered not only as the home of gods, but also as the site of the council of the gods. The celestial and astronomical dimension of the Armenian plateau is all the more evident when you consider the archaeological site of Portasar, located in Urfa, the south of western Armenia, which dates back over 12,000 years and is one of the largest and oldest ritual and religious complex in the world. Portasar is a sacred high site considered by scientists to be the oldest temples in the world. Excavations in 1995 revealed giant T-shaped limestone columns weighing up to 50 tons and reaching five meters in height, decorated with numerous sculpted motifs, including symbols and animals. The excavations revealed that the architectural techniques used to build such a complex presuppose that Armenian society possessed a remarkable level of development and knowledge, be it zoological, anatomical, celestial, and others. This is evident in the artifacts and relief sculptures found on the site, such as the vulture stone, an engraving depicting animals and insects that could correspond to the constellations and indicate the site's astronomical vocation. This heritage in Western Armenia, which the Armenian nation has been deprived of for 104 years, as a result of the occupation of our lands and territories has either been illicitly appropriated or destroyed, and many of our monuments are in ruins. The reappropriation and reacculturation of our knowledge by our entire population, including our population in exile, that is to say, return to assimilation with our original culture is therefore an essential mission. From Mont Nemrut to the springs of Monsur, let's travel with Anaïd and discover the depth of her spiritual and energetic message. The program is vast, and we are delighted to share with you an example of one of the many values of our civilization. We thank you very much. Thank you.